we are on our way to my last physical therapy session yeah, before my next doctor's appointment. <laughs> it's been like, what's today? Today's Friday. It's been, uh, I guess, five weeks since my surgery. I guess just, just over five weeks. So five weeks was yesterday. A couple days ago, my most recent appointment, I was told that, yes, you are on track, maybe a little bit ahead of schedule, given that you are who you are, then we want to be like very much ahead of schedule. So I think we're going to start pushing it and getting into some of the, some of the fun stuff is what I was told. Some of it I've probably done before. Some of it might be a new experience, um, but we'll see how it goes. I anticipate in a couple days, I'll have my brace unlocked to where it can go to 90 degrees of flexion. Uh, I haven't achieved 90 degrees just yet with uh, my PT kind of grinding on the leg and just like really pushing it hard. I can get to about 60 degrees just like pulling up myself. Like I showed you a few weeks ago with uh, what's called heel slides. Essentially I have my foot on the ground and I just like pick up my my leg in, at, my, at my quad and just pick it up so my knee bends. And I, kinda, I stop like well before there's any like real discomfort. I, I kind of stop where there's like uh, like pressure like pulling pressure not just like pressure that's gonna like hurt but like pressure where okay there's something there i should you know maybe not screw with it that much but it will be interesting going from this thing straight and locked all the time to having it at like 90 degrees I, it's I, I don't i don't yeah. i'm really confused because he said during the appointment like a week and a half ago so you can have your leg bent when you're sitting there. And I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, if I'm just sitting on the couch and not doing anything, like the brace is not on, <laughs> which is probably wrong, but I don't know. It's not something that I recommend to everybody else do, just kind of go rogue. <laughs> but usually I'm like on the couch and doing some sort of, some exercises. So I can't have the brace on while I'm doing the exercises. So that's just what I do. And you know, sometimes I get distracted and my leg is just kind of sitting there. I'm not like, hurting myself by doing it. It's just, eh, it's just not on. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like I'm setting myself up for disappointment when it comes to, yes, only 90 degrees when you're not moving, as opposed to we're just gonna unlock it to 90 degrees so that's as far as your leg will go no matter how hard you try to push it. Which, like, I'm not there yet, and I know I'm not there yet, but at the same time, I would like to be there. But it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, and I know after the first couple months, like the first couple months go super slow, but after the first couple months, progress starts to happen kind of exponentially. Which I am very much looking forward to. And I'm also looking forward to doing all the weird stuff at PT today because uh, one, my facial expressions are gonna be funny uh, <laughs> because I don't know what the hell's happening. And, and two, it's just another kind of, hey, we're moving forward we can push it harder. The, the healing is doing what it's supposed to be doing. We are working on remodeling the type three patchwork collagen into type one rope-like collagen. And the best way to do that is through mechanical stress. So let's give it some mechanical stress and we're not worried about like breaking the damn thing. All right, I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully a handful of you are too, at, at least, you know, watching me suffer. <laughs> All right, so we are now gonna do BFR and the which stands for blood flow restriction therapy. The principle behind it is we will create a ischemic or hypoxic environment, something where we get rid of the oxygen and it forces your body to work anaerobically as opposed to aerobically. And this produces a lot of muscle hypertrophy or size growth, which is directly correlated to strength. Doing so, we can do it with very low weight. In this case, we use just body weight. So it allows us to actually stress the muscle from a metabolic standpoint without having to load any joints or surgeries, like in this case. So we, we, there's tissue we can't load yet, but we don't wanna get all this disuse atrophy. We can do something like BFR to allow us to get all those hypertrophy and strength gains without stressing this tissue. So and the research on it shows that the strength gains and hypertrophy gains with low load BFR, which is what this is, as in really no weight, are similar if not equal to high load training, AKA like a heavy barbell training or something like that. And so it allows us to build up this muscle strength without stressing it. And we get similar gains to as if we heavy loaded it. The only thing it's not loading, not doing though, is it's not loading up structures like passive structures or tendons, which they need load to in, in order to adapt and actually get stronger. 
So we can do this, but it's un with the understanding and caveat that it is strictly muscular gains. We're not gonna build tendon strength or ligament strength or things like that, or bone density, because we're not actually loading uh, the structures. So it's great, but it also does have its limitations. So eventually when we can load a surgery, we need to start loading it and use this as a supplement to that, not just the main force. So what we do with this one too is, we use these cuffs and this little fun device here, and we pump it up really, really tight, which it just did, to get what's called your limb occlusion pressure. That is the amount of force it takes to completely cut off the blood supply to your leg. Then we use, in the legs, the standard value to be 80%, and the arms you would only use 50%, but in here we use 80% of the value it found. So we cut off 80% of the blood supply and only allow 20% in. Once it gets pumped up to the full value here, we then do a workout. In this case, we do a very specific amount. We do 30 reps and then three rounds of 15. So he's gonna start doing the 30 reps now. The first 30 reps is basically to get rid of the oxygen that's still left in the tissue. And then the three rounds of 15 is when the real hypoxic work starts. And we get all that metabolic stress that produces all these downstream effects. Your body has a hormonal response, endocrine response to the metabolites that build up in the muscle. And then when we release the cuff, it has a physiological response to that with release of nitric oxide, growth factors, healing factors, things like that, um, that again are all products that help promote strength and hypertrophy. Woo! Holy crap. Oh. We'll give it a break for a hot sec. Woo. Let the reperfusion occur, and then we'll range it a little bit. So now that we've done all the BFR, we got a lot of blood flow in the area. The tissue becomes more extensible, and it allows us to actually push it beyond where it was before. How are we feeling there? Fine. Fine? All Very right. Some. All right. And so this, we're going after true passive tissue lengthening. So this is where we'd want to do actual longer holds as opposed to any like dynamic type motions. And this will allow us to create tension through the muscle and through the surgical site, the tendon helps with the collagen fiber lay down. It's so when a scar first forms, it's more type three collagen. We want more of the type one kind of nice parallel railroad track uh, fibers. And this type of mechanical stress helps induce that. And I gotta kick his butt a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And your body's gonna have a natural protective mechanism. It's gonna kick that quad on and be like, no, no, don't go farther, but it needs time for the Golgi tendon muscle spindle, all that fun jazz to like relax. Okay, it's not a threat, and then it will allow me to go farther. Good. All right, six leg curls have you actually used the most. There we go, good. So additionally, using the hamstring will inherently inhibit the quad. It's called reciprocal inhibition. So when he uses his hamstring, his body sends an inhibitory signal to the quad, allowing it to relax. It's like if I tried to pick up something with my bicep, but my tricep turned on, I'd be fighting my own muscle pressure. It's the same concept here. So it's a natural reflex, and we're gonna take advantage of it to force some inhibition of the quad and build up from there. Now we're gonna use electrical stimulation to externally activate the quad because right now internally that neuromuscular control has been reduced a little bit because of the pain and everything like that. Your body shuts off the muscle. So now we want to turn it back on. So he is gonna to try to squeeze his muscle as hard as he can and then I'm gonna give it a juice. All right, so go ahead, flex the quad, squeeze, 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 and then over the top. Good, hold, 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 hold. three. Four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Woo! All That's right. Nice pressure. No, there's more. <laughs> so we're gonna basically overstimulate it, and that will in turn strengthen the neuromuscular connection his brain will do because I'm forcing the muscle to turn on stronger than it volitionally can right now. All right, you ready? Yep. And go. Squeeze as hard as you can. Squeeze, 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 and. There we are. Good, hold, hold, hold. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Good, hold it, hold it, hold it. And relax. Nice. It's, it's always the, oh yeah, there's a lot. Oh, there's more, yeah. I found it. <laughs> the guys you see, they get a shot with a taser to see what yeah. it feels like. Yeah. 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 The goal is the extension lag, no extension lag, no knee bending when you initially lift it up. So drive the knee into the table, squeeze, hold this strong contraction we just facilitated. Now pick the leg up, good. Up to the height of the other leg, perfect. And then control it back down eccentrically is important as well. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. 
good. And now try to go back up without, good, no bend in the knee. That's all the quad control. As you increase the load, the knee doesn't bend at all. Good, this looks great. And the quad control looks good. That's the main thing we're gonna look for here. If there's any dipping or bending in the knee, you wanna be careful because that's gonna now put tension through the surgical site under uh, actual lengthening tension plus contractile tension. And we just wanna be careful there. This is a terminal knee extension. And so the idea behind this is now, this is what's called closed chain as opposed to open chain. Where open chain is my femur's fixed and my tibia is moving, which would be like a, uh, uh, leg extension or whatever. This now, your foot's gonna be stationary, so the tibia is essentially going to be stationary, and you're gonna move the femur on it. And so this is closed chain, we're gonna go light, and it's just for quad activity and to push against the force without going into that loaded extension position where gravity's gonna really load up the front. So we're gonna stay here, just for balance, and you're gonna let your knee go forward just a little bit, just where you feel comfortable, so your heel can come off the ground. There's so you can go, go, go up on your toe, oh yeah, yeah, you can just scoot back a little bit. So, stay nice and upright. Now let your foot go up onto the toe, like there, good. And then now, squeeze the quad and drive the knee backwards, flexing the quad, so you're pushing against the force of the band. And hold for five, three, four, five. Now the controlled unlock is just as important. Controlled unlock and let that heel come up and the knee bend forward, how's that feel? Yeah? Okay. Let's do eight like that. Eight five second holds. So drive back at the full extension. Lock, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Three, four, five. And then the controlled unlock is just as important. Controlled unlock. Sweet. Yeah, awesome. Good. How's a quad feel? Fine? Yeah. You feel like it's pushing against something though? Yeah. Yeah. And this is light. This is it's very light. Yeah. yeah. It's but it's at least there's something there this time. Yeah, there's something to push against. And make sure we feel comfortable with this level of force. We don't wanna we're not to the point where I'm like, I really want you to work and strain. We're at the point where we just wanna push against something and maintain the control. It's still control as opposed to like tensile strength. Anyway, and once we can start, it's just, you know, we have to be safe and progressive in the beginning. Once you, it's, a, it's, it's almost like exponential when the, you're able to introduce something new and it's safe and ready for it, all of a sudden you're like, and this gets easier because of that guy did this and it's, you know, it's all full control. What a lot of people don't understand is that when you do PT like properly and you like work aggressively at it, it's a workout. Like I get home and I'm like, exhausted as I clean up all the crap on my countertop. I mean, like sitting there in a chair and flexing your quadriceps muscle, like just the one, that hard, is kind of a lot of work because it's not like I'm just sitting here using my quad. Like I can stand here and flex my left quad and be pretty comfortable and, and flex it reasonably hard for quite a while. The right one, I can kind of half-ass if I put in the same amount of effort. Like right now, it feels like I'm doing more than I could do this morning because we kind of worked at it today. And that's how it kind of goes. But to focus on it and to make sure that my brain is doing everything that I want to do takes a lot more effort because I can't do that yet. So it makes you really tired and you have to recover. I got asked a couple times like what I'm like eating for recovery. <laughs> and I like, I kind of chuckle at it because it's the same crap that I eat for recovering from weightlifting, from recovering from anything, right? I have a higher protein diet than most at baseline for a number of reasons. I make sure I get uh, varied vitamins and minerals from a plethora of sources. I make sure that my diet is not so bland that I am very depressed. But at the same time, I make sure that my calories serve a purpose and whether that's, you know, like health and recovery related or mental health and happiness related, it's a balance that I've struck over the last 10, 11, 10 or 11 years of like doing things the way I do things. Uh, tonight I'm making myself a buffalo chicken pizza. The bread part of the pizza is chicken. I know it's not as good as a normal buffalo chicken pizza. It's not, I'm gonna tell you right now but it's not bad.
And if I'm going to have something that's like smothered in mozzarella cheese and barbecue sauce, 98% uh, <laughs> lean ground chicken breast is a reasonably good option. I'll probably have the first half of it around 5.15, 5.30, give or take, and the second half of it probably in the 7, 7.30 neighborhood. I don't want all of that food hitting me at once for a number of reasons. One, it's gonna like stretch my stomach a bit. It's a lot of food. And two, the change to my blood sugar in the short term from the barbecue sauce is not that much, to be honest with you. It's the handful of hours down the line as the fat from the cheese starts to metabolize. I got a package I'm gonna go get, hang on. So of course it's a figs package and I need to tear off the, damn it. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Yeah, they, they emailed me that there's there was something that I Oh, forgot. I wonder if it's a sweat collection. No, I don't think so, that one's already out. Oh. They, they, they sent me an email saying that, hey, we're gonna send you some stuff, but it's not gonna be out for another month and a half. Like, okay. But I had to remove the, uh, address stickers so none of you creepazoids on the internet can figure out where I live, but yeah. I got the email from, from Figs that they were launching like the, the loungewear collection. Like two days after I got home from the hospital, I was like, oh my god, that's perfect. And um, of course they didn't send me a set, so I was like, I'm sad. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see uh, whenever they get released. I don't know what it is. Now it's time to make Curious Big Mac. Do you want to eat that bow? No, I keep it. Never mind, I keep it. Marsha, can I have it? No, I keep it. I keep it. I keep it. Did you bring me a bone? Did you bring me a bone? Mom, I keep it. Mom, I keep it. I keep it. I'm going to keep it nice for you. I keep it nice for you. I keep it nice. Marcia, you want to help me get a drink? Marcia, you want to help me get a drink? You want to bring your bone? You want to bring your bone? Ow. Dog owner's house in three words. Okay, come on. Don't lick that. So Curious Big Mac is one of these carb balance tortillas. Four ounces of turkey breast that I smashed the hell into this thing. And then after I cook it, I flip Billy. it. Millie, stop being terrible. And then a bar uh, barbecue sauce, a Big Mac sauce that I made kind of from well, scratch. And that's about it. And I'll show you before we end the video. They all look like when they come on.